What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Press X Podcast, episode 138, your weekly podcast for gaming news and opinions coming at you each and every Monday. I'm Kevin McManus. With me today, Nick Castle. You are correct. I've had to think about it for a second, but I, I got it right. Um, Amnesia is a terrible thing. Uh, so lots of news this week. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's anything... I, well, there's a couple big surprises. Gamescom obviously happened. That dropped the bulk of the news. Mm-hmm. And then it just felt like there was like little tidbits of news everywhere. So I, I feel like we grabbed what we could and kind of yeah. make a shot out of it. There's other things that I saw, like... Um, the Shovel Knight team tweeted out that they're getting ready to show off something new and stuff like that. But I really wanted to take like news that we could actually like, you know, really dive into uh, kind of the the biggest things. Lots and of variety too. Them. Lots of gameplay. Lots of dates. Lots of showcases. Some, some rumor stuff going yeah. around. That's that's pretty interesting. It's like a whole grab bag full of things. I, I agree. Yeah. Um, but with that said, let's start the show with comments. Uh, from last week. Last week, heavily PlayStation VR focused yep. and just kind of VR focused in general. PlayStation VR sold 3 million copies uh, or, or units and uh, the attach rate for the console is really, really high. I believe they said Skyrim VR was the best selling game. No um, surprise. It, yeah. All, Triple all A game? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it was Skyrim and then Resident Evil. Yeah. Um, but we kind of posed the question, you know, what's the future of VR? Is it is it a one and done thing? Are we getting PlayStation VR two? Are we going to get like a PlayStation VR Pro? You know, what's happening? Um, and do we think that it was a success? Is this even a good idea? Is we should have wore where our uh, visors the entire time. That would have been awful. That would have been sweet. That would have <laughs> been horrible. Um, so we have some comments on that. Zach Yoder says, personally. I don't care about VR yet, but I eventually think it will be essential for super immersive games that we dream about. Uh, yeah, I I agree. I think that it is very much right now. Uh, Sony likes to say they're kind of in the PlayStation One phase of VR. Yeah, and like th- that's how it, fe- it feels like it's a test. But still, if you just use it, you kind of instantly know if it's for you or not. You're like, oh, this is incredible. That's my uh, biggest problem with it is that there's too many people in the middle. There's like X percent that really loves it, X percent that's just like, nah, it's not for me. And then there's just so many people. It feels like there's like 70 percent of it's people that play that, yeah. or in the middle. Just like, eh, maybe. Like they're just waiting for that right game to. Yeah, well, make that's them. my thing. And it reminds me a bit of the Vita. Like people are like, oh, I just need that one game or, oh, it just needs to be wireless. Yeah. And it feels like excuses. Like, they don't actually really want it, but they're just making excuses for why they don't have it. Mm. And I felt that a lot with the Vita. Um, and I felt it a little bit with the Switch early on, like the first couple months of the yeah. Switch. Um, it's not usually not a good <laughs> a good avenue to be going down. Well, but. yeah, like, and I'm blaming it more on Sony and the game choices uh, right now. Like, you got to make people have an opinion about it, I guess is where I was going with that. So Yeah, I, I think that they were fine. I think the new IPs are great. I think that the AAA stuff was awesome, but it has definitely slowed down over the past couple months. Like, this year, it has slowed yeah. down. Um, and we need, you know, we need a fallout or we need, we need something big. Uh, and that's fallout not out the game, not an actual fallout. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not something that's just tacked on. Johnny Wellman says VR is dead. Mm. Yelled it. All caps. Just real. I don't know if he's angry that he's dead. I don't know if he's happy that it's dead, but it, it that's just a lot of oomph put into that statement. Yeah. Well, that sucks because that whole last episode <laughs> was a waste. <laughs> there is no future for VR. World End says, even if PlayStation VR flops, even if five more VR headset, uh, even if five more VR headsets after it flop, VR as a medium is the future. It's the next step. It can't be avoided. The technology just needs to be there. Uh, it needs quantum computers. Regular computers just aren't good enough. But it's hard to tell if PlayStation VR is a success or not. Not because it sold more than the other two, uh, Oculus and Vive combined. So it is the market leader, but it also only sold the 3 million units. So is that it a success on its own? I'm not sure. And he says, I don't think so right now. Um, yeah, very, very interesting. I, I knew or assumed that PlayStation VR would be the best-selling uh, VR headset. Just it's the, the price, most approachable. The price, the user base, the way that Sony shows it off is way better. That like there's not like a 
And maybe, you know, maybe there is, but I, I don't see like the uh, Vive conference where they're like, here's all the cool Vive well, stuff. Well, yeah, and the problem with play. those are do you have a PlayStation? Yeah. You can run VR. Do you have a computer? Yeah. Do you have <laughs> list of specs? Yeah, that, that's <laughs> maybe you can run VR. That's true as well. Like, even <laughs> if I got a Vive, which Vibes are really cool, um, I don't really yeah. like Oculus very much compared to like of the three. I think Oculus is by far the worst. They all have their perks. Yeah. Uh, but I think like if you're going to do it, you might as well get the Vive mm -hmm. as far as computer stuff goes. Um, like I have no clue if my computer could run it. I don't really feel like figuring it out, like with all that stuff. And I know that you are now in the 90%. Yeah. <laughs> I know that the PlayStation runs it. I easy. Yeah. I'm done. Like I, I don't need to think about it. Um, but anyway, I personally love VR. So, uh, I like bringing it up every once in a while. In fact, I'll bring it up a little bit later. Uh, in this next segment, which I call what we've been playing, mm -hmm. but uh, I think the actual title of it is what we are playing. Okay. And I've never changed it, and I'm not going to. But it's just <laughs> thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> just a fun little tidbit that in the notes it's what we've been playing, and I'm pretty sure it's what we are playing on our on our tags. Um, Nick, I'll start with you. Uh, a, f a few things at the moment. Uh, did a little bit more Monster Hunter World. I'm just like slowly chipping away at that. That's more of a leisurely pastime mm -hmm. sort of game because, I, like I said, I still haven't quite figured out schedules to get like the group going. Right. Um, yeah. So I just take it basically at a snail's pace at that point. Like I know what the game's about, and right now, if you're just playing by yourself, it's more of just like get to the next like level and of gear and stuff like that and just kind of get a little bit better get a little bit better so there's no real rush um i'm glad i have it i'm glad it came out glad i waited but um it's it's not something where man i gotta press to finish this game you know something like right. that so that's kind of what that game is going to be for the next while until the i guess um september mid-september hit something like that but um other than that played dead cells Ooh. Um, it was in my brain this week. It was between Dead Cells and Guacamelee 2. Interesting. And you picked Dead Cells. Yeah. Um, I went with some. I know I'm going to like Guacamelee 2. Uh, sure. I know there's a few changes that they made, but I looked at it enough and go and went, I know I'm going to like this and I can play it whenever. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, maybe it'll come up at the end of the year sort of thing. Uh, but I, I doubt with some heavy hitters like God of War, Octopath, Red Dead, and, you know, stuff like that. that oh, that type of end it's, of the year. Yeah, okay. it's, it's going to, you know, really steal the conversation, I guess. I don't know. My <laughs> game of the year is going to be a 2D side scroller. So um, cool. But I know I'm going to like it, so I wanted to try something. I'm not a Metroidvania person at all. but God, I'm not um, either. There's there's enough spin on this one to make it feel different that I actually ended up really, really liking it. Hmm. Um, I'm going to try and not plagiarize <laughs> when I talk about this. But, like, the cool thing for me is that there's enough, like, weapon combinations and paths that you can go down with... Like I said, if it's just weapons, you can go bow and arrow and sword, or you can go down just a completely different path, and that's all based on drops... That's all based on if you die and respawn, um, more different types of weapons show up. There's shops that you can go to mid-level and at the end of levels. So there's just a whole slew of like options. There's fire stuff, there's ice stuff, there's just normal stab, there's projectiles, and there's just everything. So after a few deaths and screwing around, like I finally found the combination that I liked, mm -hmm. and it just felt awesome. Interesting. Um, Got some more stuff that let me do like six or seven jumps in air and just made me even more acrobatic. And like it's real, the way I'm playing it now is really, really fast. I don't think there's a timer per se on like you need to speed through this or anything like that or any sort of level that like pushes you forward, I guess, or like a Mario, uh, old Mario game. But like this one, you can just kind of take your own pace and you can attack the enemies and like the map however you want to it's really cool because every time you play the map it's different right um, it's procedural yeah it's procedurally generated but as far as i understand it's like chunks mm -hmm. it's yeah. like built uh, pre-built chunks that are put together so it doesn't feel like 
I don't know. Sometimes it feels like awkward with a lot of procedural yeah. stuff. Um, um, and I, I think like to think of problem. it more like, I guess, train tracks, how, you know, when you're coming up to a crossway, you can either go left or right, like when the light changes and you can move it over, like sort of like that, where, you know, this run, I went left, but uh, this time, okay, I died, I get back to the level, this time it curves right, or in the game, it's more like up, down, uh, but there's like different paths that open and close based on, uh, you know, whatever algorithm that they're using, so it's pretty cool. Uh, like I said, I haven't died too much because I finally got what I liked and kind of locked in. Um, died after that <laughs> and lost those two weapons. I was going to say you lose got your there stuff again. when you yeah. when you die. Right. Eventually, was able through like kind of randomness and uh, picking it up in the store and like blueprints that you get in the game. I was right. able to get my core package back together uh, that I really really like. So. That's Unfortunately, awesome. I know so much about this game. Do you? Never played it, and it's all the fault of one person, <laughs> which <Yeah>. is <laughs> slightly unfortunate. I also, I didn't buy Dead Cells, but I was thinking about it. I uh, mm-hmm. I was teetering with it in my cart. I was going to grab it for the Switch. You got it on PC, I assume? Yeah, I had it, um, I guess, pre-launch or whatever it's called on there, um, and I had it since then, and it wasn't, a, it's sort of like a Fortnite thing. It wasn't until there was some controversy, there was some talk about it that I went, Huh. And just installed it uh, after I bought it. Gotcha. So really liking it. I have no clue as far as progression where I'm at. I can't imagine it's too long of a game uh, as far as getting through all the bosses. Yeah, I, think. I was going to say, I think it's just more about being able to do it on your life. Yeah. Right. Like you can't if you push too hard and then you die, you start over. Correct. Yeah. 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 So like I think it's just more about building a run where you can get to the end and beat the game. Yeah, um, I think on this current run, I, um, I hope it auto saves at least. Uh, on this current run, I'm through two, two or three bosses. So I don't know what that means. Uh, <laughs> I, I, could, I could be right at the end, or I could be like less than halfway. But I finally figured out like what works for me as far as weapon combinations. And basically, you get a primary, a secondary. You get two like equipment sort of options, and then you get what's usually used for like a health flask uh, sort of thing. So you get all sorts of combinations. But what I really like to do, I ended up with something where I have this like huge spear and um, my secondary attack is like a freeze. And like the spear says, you know, does more damage to frozen enemies. Yeah, I've heard there's a lot of ice grenade. um, And I've got something that helps me, like like I said, like do six or seven jumps up in the air, whereas you're just used to doing like a double jump. So I'm all over the place. Uh, it's really cool. And I just, I found the fit, like the pitfalls of where I do bad and die and lose horribly. And then, you know, I kind of steer clear of those. So yeah, it sounds really good. I, yeah. I want to play it before the end of the year. I might order it here uh, in the next few days, though I probably wouldn't get to start it. Yeah, for Switch another few days, like a pretty cool platform for it. I agree. I don't think I'd get it anyway. I absolutely will not play it mouse and keyboard. So I feel like if I'm not playing something mouse and keyboard, it can be good on anything. Like it's gonna be basically the same experience on whatever you're playing with. So I should have ch- checked it out in 4K. My guess I don't have a 4K monitor quite yet. But um, other than that, I am playing through. Banner Saga, again, I'm on the second game, and I'm trying to get to the third one, which was just recently released, so I guess I'll check back more when I'm actually on the third one, which sure. is new news, but um, liking the game a little, or a series, I guess, more than I remember, and I'm glad that I can just do one, two, three in a straight line now, rather than right. wait, so pretty cool games, I like them, um, can't wait to get to three. And I'm almost running out of time <laughs> to get to three before the onslaught begins. Uh, so. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for me. Oh, really? Okay. Yep. Um, so for me, first off, I got my awesome uh, vinyl set here. So I was very excited about this. The It's near, near Gestalt and near Replicant, which are the Japanese names for... Um, Gestalt was the one that came out here that was just called Nier. And then Replicant was actually sort of like a Pokemon Red Blue situation where, uh, thank you, sort of like a Pokemon Red Blue situation where they had like two versions of the game and they had different main characters and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, and as far as I understand, they didn't want to release the one with the female main character here. 
So they just released the other one and called it Nier. And then uh, obviously uh, Automata is the other one. It is just a vinyl box set um, with not all, but the most popular songs from each of those games. And Square Enix just kind of randomly tweeted out, hey, uh, we have more of them. And I was like, man, I really want it. I don't know. And then Craig tweeted it to me. And I was like, yeah, I know. All right, I bought it. And then it showed up within like... 30 hours or something because it, it literally shipped from like two towns over yeah and i was very confused when it showed up because i was like what is that like i hadn't i did not think the square enix store thing that i bought would show up so quickly um it's also new egg and places like that just happen to have warehouses around yeah here, so like, it's pretty I, cool. didn't, I didn't think the square enix uh i, I guess it's no, just man. a because it's a vinyl you know hmm. uh, I, I guess it, that has something to do with it being near nashville but anyway um awesome Brand new art and everything on the the insides of it and everything. And uh, how do you know you haven't opened it? I have opened it. This is <laughs> I just have the cover, the dust cover on it. Um, Get the reflective glare. Yeah, so I'm on. I'm sure it looks great on camera. <laughs> but anyway, really happy that I got that. I don't know if they're still uh, in the store, but the Square Enix store had them. As far as what I've been playing, uh, I've been playing this little gem called Mega Man X Seven. Oh my gosh! I talked about it last week. I was like, this game's really bad. It, the game is really bad. Um, I finished the regular levels. There's only three levels after that. Um, eh, like three and a half. And that's way less than any of the other Mega Man games. The first one is a straight line. The second right. one might as well be a straight line. And I was like, this is just like terrible. Yeah. Like th this is really, really bad. Then in every Mega Man game, they do a boss rush where you refight all the old enemies. And the boss rush in this game is so miserable because all the bosses are just whatever. Like, one of them's in an arena where it's full, like, 3D controlled. And then there's other ones that are in, like, 2D, like, 2.5D side-scroller sections. And so it's, like, super jarring as you're jumping between these boss battles. And they take forever because their their health is, like, you know, filling up the whole screen um, across. And like, this is the worst thing ever. Anyway, finish those, get into the final fight. I beat the first stage of the final boss, and I get to the second stage. And um, he's got a whole bunch of health and you fight him over like seven platforms that you have to keep jumping between in this 3D awful platforming space. The problem is, well, there's a lot of problems, but one of the problems is the camera locks onto the boss and not you. So like if the boss is up and far away, your camera is like kind of below the platforms and he's like shooting stuff at you and you're trying to make jumps with this camera that is not you can't even see where your feet are going to land yeah uh it was awful the there's a million problems with it you have e-tanks to refill your health one time i got really close i used the e-tank to refill my health because i was going to beat him and then i fell into the pit which is instant death and it just restarts the fight but it restarts the fight without that tank because i used it so now i have to beat him without using that tank and you might think oh in you can like recharge it so if you uh, restart to go recharge it, like you back out of the level, you have to do the other three levels again and get back to the boss. Like there's just, it, it was awful. The only reason the fight was hard is because there's a giant pit, the camera's horrible, and he has an attack that he punches you straight off and you just die. Um, God, what a, what a terrible video game. Um, I did, I got my 100% in it though, so I am confident I'm going to platinum this collection, which actually makes me really happy, because uh, I was worried about it, and I, I ain't no, ain't, ain't no, uh, you know, coward Mega Man fan here. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do it, so. I don't know, you're yelling in all caps. I was, so I was very upset. <laughs> so. I was, VR is dead. <laughs> um, but anyway, going to play X8. I talked about wanting to do that on stream. It'll probably be like a night stream or something for a couple days to do it. And the fun thing about X8 is I don't know anything about it. I've seen maybe 30 seconds of gameplay of that game in my entire life. I don't know the story. I don't know how the gameplay works. I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to play it like pure and just go in and then in my own time 100% it and get that platinum. But um, taking a little break from the Mega Bands, uh, played some other things. Uh, real quick, doing my kind of, you know, routine games. Fortnite, I uh, haven't been getting, like, back into it. I've been doing my dailies and my challenges and stuff like that. Though they are having cool events start happening again, those live events. Uh, last season, they had a rocket that shot and hit the top of the map and cracked open the map and all the stuff happened. Uh, recently, lightning just started striking the map. And it's like this pink lightning and blue lightning is starting to hit things. That's realistic. And, uh, well, the interesting thing is the starting skin for the season, uh, if you max it out, he's covered in pink lightning. 
and the final skin's blue lightning. So mm-hmm. people are assuming that they're fighting in, in some capacity. There are they're like these gods fighting. Um, and it, it, it is called Ragnarok, the, uh, the skin. So makes sense, sort of. Anyway, I, the lightning started striking, and it started removing these uh, cacti from the map. And the last one got removed today, actually. And when that happened, the ceiling that was cracked healed itself. And a huge cube dropped and fell on the map. So now there's mm-hmm. just this huge jellyish cube on the map. And if you hit it, it kills you, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Uh, you, just, you just go flying off like off the platform it's on. Uh, if you hit it, it's like a trampoline. But anyway, uh, I love that Fortnite does this stuff. It's my, my favorite things that they do. They redid um, a couple areas. They, you know, they had this live event. So anytime they're doing that stuff, I'm interested in the game again. Uh so feels we'll see like they just goes. have meetings and someone raises their hand, just says something random, and it's like we're doing it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it sort of does. Uh, there was a place called Tomato Town, and the tomato got zapped away from it last season, and then it came back, and now it's Tomato Temple, and it's this whole temple that like worships this tomato. Uh, it, it's weird. What a weird video game. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next up on like my said. <laughs> on <laughs> what if <laughs> we make a tomato god. Um, next up on my list of my routine games is Pokemon Go. Uh, there was the Pokemon World Champions or whatever they call it uh, in Nashville. Um, so I, if you were within a mile radius of the convention center where that was going on, they were spawning unknown that spelled out Nashville, which was really cool. And uh, last year in LA, they were spawning Kangaskhan, which was the uh, Australian exclusive. Yeah. So I was all excited to see what exclusive we might possibly get. And we got Corsola, which is a tropical exclusive. So they spawn in Alabama and they spawn, they spawn like, you know, Southern Alabama and Florida. And it's a little upsetting because I already have one. My brother already has one. Like everybody I know has one because they're not. I don't have one. Everybody I know that's played the game a little bit <laughs> um, has them. So I was like, that that's kind of a bummer that that's what we got, you know. And then I went there and I caught one. And my first one I caught was a 100% IV uh, Corsola. So I was super happy about that because uh, I st- it's my first 100% Pokemon, which is great because like Todd just started getting like hardcore into the game and he's already got like, he's got like 100% wiggly tough and all that he got in my to a Mewtwo raid. I mean, this is ridiculous. It took me forever to do this stuff. And you're just they're just handing it out to him. It's ridiculous. Um. Next up, I played uh, Transference VR, which is the Elijah Wood, Elijah Woods Media Company combined with Ubisoft making a game about memories, uh, and they put out a demo for it. So I played the demo; it's for, you know free to download, and I think it's just like one chapter of the game. I don't know how many chapters there's going to be, um, but it was pretty neat and pretty creepy, and like it was scary, but it didn't feel like it was trying to scare you. If that makes sense, it was so, jump scares. Um, like there was stuff that I think people would consider a jump scare, but it wasn't put there to scare you. It like made sense in the context of the story that mm. they were telling. Um, but it was definitely very eerie and like thriller. If it, it felt like a thriller. Uh, but anyway, you are going into the broken memories of different people, and the demo is like someone with PTSD, and you're figuring out what happened to like cause that memory and kind of how they think and what they see. And it's cool because you're in the house, and some of the memories are glitched. So you'll see like a bottle, but it's not complete. It's like glitching out, and you can go up to it and like interact with it and read the labels, and you you know you're you're kind of like snooping through this person's house. But it's weird because every time you shut off the light switches, like the day changes to another day, um, which is like a different memory. And you're just trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. But there was some pretty creepy stuff in it. Like there was one part where the answering machine went off. Somebody left a message and then it cut because the answering machine was full. And then I went down in the basement and I came back upstairs and there was another message being left. And I was like, but the answering machine was full when I was in here 40 seconds ago. And then I turned around and all the furniture in the house was on the ceiling. So it was all like flipped. Um, so like just stuff like that is really creepy, uh, especially yeah. in VR. So I, I enjoyed it. I, I, you know, finished the demo. I thought it was really interesting. Um, I'll be playing the full game. I doubt it's going to. I don't know. It might get a physical release because it's Ubisoft. And I don't think Ubisoft is. I mean, they did like Child of Light and that technically got a physical release. I don't think Valiant Hearts did. But um, if it gets a physical release, I'll play it probably at launch. And if not, 
Uh, I'll probably get it when it gets discounted or whatever digitally. But I liked it a lot. It was cool. Very creepy. They very unsettling. Unsettling is a good word for it. Have fun. They uh, they started off with the whole like recorded tape, and they're like, nothing that is going to happen can hurt you. And he like leans in, and he's like, nothing can hurt you. It, should, it feels like an episode of Black Mirror. Um, but I enjoyed it a lot. And then finally, I started Detroit Become Human. Um, don't have too much to say about it. I've only done like, you know, four or five chapters or sections or whatever you want to call them. Um, so you've at least seen everyone once. Yes, I've seen everyone once. I'm on the second run through with uh, with characters. Um, like it a lot. Controls a little janky for sure. Uh, I don't know why it controls so janky. Like they fix certain things that I've had a problem with in like Heavy Rain and Beyond uh, Two Souls. But, like, they didn't fix other things. Like, the cinematic camera, they have, like, this... The problem was sometimes the camera would just be bad, so they fixed that by now if you hit, like, R1 or something, the camera will jump to a different angle. But, like, it's still kind of weird. And they still do that thing where, like, you don't turn around. So, like, if I wanted to do something and then I wanted to turn around, you don't turn around. You, like, make this circle. Like, you make a weird, yeah. like, circle. Like you turn Yeah, trying to walk around. I'm like, ah, it, it just doesn't control... Like, until dawn did it like just copy that but anyway as far as the story stuff goes uh interesting i like it so far i think it's very stressful every you feel like i don't know whether or not you you are but i feel like i'm on the clock for every decision that i'm making everything that i'm doing like if you it does feel like there's a lot of weight to things that are happening and i love that it straight up tells you when you unlock stuff like you taught you do something and it's like new dialogue option yeah. unlocked like that helps. Yeah, it's super rewarding uh, to do that because you feel like you're accomplishing something, like doing nothing, like well, unlocking you, a door or walking this way. I think you know. it helps uh, guide you too because you can walk around and dick around and do whatever you want, but it helps you understand, like, like if I went and looked at you know this over here and it didn't reward me with anything or say something unlocked and I looked at this and nothing, 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 then I kind of know like what I'm looking for. So you don't waste too much time just like looking at nothing. Uh, yeah, and getting nothing for it. I think there's a lot of games that could benefit from this, and most of them are older games, so it's not like their fault too much. But um, just the idea of being like, hey, you know, you found a thing that'll change something later. Like until Dawn had the little butterfly. Yeah. That whenever something happened, the butterfly would kind of flicker over the screen. Um, that stuff is nice. It it just lets you know that you're. Per, you know your story might be different now than somebody else's story and that's that's really really cool um but like i said i i don't really have too strong of an opinion on the characters or, or anything like that yet I'm, I'm still just starting out but i'm enjoying it hopefully i'll have it beat by um next podcast that's the game plan. damn it's not that long right like eight it hours feels like it took me a long time but that was like get home from work play a little bit like four or five chapters go to sleep yeah that's the opposite of that's how i started out and i was like this is too stressful to do this there's and definitely I, one character who's stressful <laughs> <laughs> i was like this is too stressful and uh so i i want to just like section out you know a good eight hour chunk could just play it and, and finish it um on top of that i got the shamu collection but i didn't get to play it yet uh we have some news uh, about shamu later on but um i'm very excited to play that and that's the other reason i want to definitely finish. no rush to play <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, that's the other reason I want to finish Detroit, though, so I can hop into that, because there's some other things releasing soon that I want to play, and it's about to get crazy. With that said, oh, let's nice. hop into the the large list of news that we have here. Uh, it's just like rapid fire stuff. Yeah, in no particular order of importance. I just... No know. segues this time? No, not at all. Uh, there will be no new Assassin's Creed game. Uh, so basically, next year... Or this year we're getting Odyssey, yeah. and some people were a little bummed, myself included, that they took that year off. They gave us Origin or Origins, yeah. which was such a um, departure from what Assassin's Creed's mm -hmm. been doing. They made it more RPG like. They did a lot of stuff. They changed the combat up a lot. They did a lot of stuff that people Seemed liked. More well received than the past like eight uh, Assassin's yeah, Creed for sure. And then at E3, they're like, look. Another Assassin's yeah. Creed that kind of looks like that reskinned. And then people are like, ooh. And they're like, but there's romance options, which is always a good way to Yay. get people to be like, oh, okay, <laughs> we forgive you. Uh, but yeah, you can play the man or the woman. And there's also romance options and more like actual, di more like Mass Effect or Elder Scrolls. Yeah, it's even trees. more RPG like. Yeah. 
Um, with that said, people are worried, oh, they're going to, you know, milk this, they're going to kill it. Well, they've already announced that uh, they are planning to do kind of updates and things to the game throughout 2019. Yeah. Uh, and we're not going to get another, like, mainline Assassin's Creed in 2019. Uh, I assume we'll get watch, get your watchdogs watch predictions or in. something. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's cool. Uh, I wish that this game took a little longer and, and maybe made itself look a little bit different, but I don't know. I forget this game it exists, se- honestly. It seems a lot different than the last one, just like actually watching it. But I mean, yeah, it's obviously using the same like system yeah. in place. Which it is the problem cool. with what the Assassin's Creed games were doing. And yeah. people were so happy that they fixed that. And then they're like, hey, now this is just what they look like. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know. For me, it was more like the gameplay just got stale. I didn't mind, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. That sort of mentality. Uh, but I don't know. But yeah, it got ran into the ground. All seven straight years or something like that. <laughs> Maybe a little crazy. Yeah. It would be cool if they do do like new title next year, new title, and then take a break, and then new title, new title, and then take a break. Sure, a cool. Pattern. But I, I would like them to announce, especially that if they plan. like kind of weaved into each other. Yeah, that would be cool. I wouldn't mind like sequels to kind of like a Final Fantasy X, X, X two type thing yeah. where they're, they're actual really, sequels. But I think I'd really like like if there was one main goal. But they were like two. This guy was protagonist. This guy was antagonist. But if you play the opposite game, this guy's good and that guy's I've bad. I always like, wanted a of. game to do that so badly, and I'm sure there's examples out mm-hmm. there. But like, I've never played a game where that was the case, mm-hmm. like the way that I want it to. Yeah, um, it'd be unfortunately. weird. Unfortunately. But yeah, that would be cool. Where like they're not they ca- they're like gray characters basically yeah. instead of just be being cool if like, it, like evil. saved player A's decisions. Um, yeah, like you know you intersect twenty times or something in the game, but like it saves the other guy's decisions. And when you play the second game, you're seeing those decisions. Uh, oh my gosh, this is and such you can a good idea. Go back and play them in any order. Uh, you can go play the second one first, and then you know whatever. So I don't know. It sounds great. I would play that game. Maybe I should be a game designer. Probably not. Next up. Bloodstained uh, Ritual of the Night yeah, uh, has been delayed until 2019. That's not very surprising. I assume that that game was already delayed until 2019, to be dead honest. Mm-hmm. I'm glad it's getting delayed. It needs more time, whatever. Uh, it has also been canceled on the Vita, citing the fact that they're not going to be able to manufacture the carts anymore because they have to get them in by February 2019, uh, as Sony kind of requested. They're like, oh, it seems like the Vita's on the way out. Seems like it's not worth, this isn't them, but this, this is what it means. Seems like it's not worth putting it onto the Vita, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Bloodstain canceled. Bloodstain not coming to the Vita. Uh, if you backed it on the Vita, you can pick another platform or get your money back. So that's nice. Vita 2 in February 2019. <laughs> um, this sucks. I probably would have played it on Vita Unless, I don't know, I, I'm 90% sure it is. Uh, I'd probably play it on Switch over it now, though. I'm trying to make that transition. Yeah. I have my shelf of Vita games back there. I have a handful of them that I haven't played or that I still really want to get to. Um, every once in a while, I turn it on and kind of chip away at one. But I do want my Switch to start becoming my main like handheld thing, even though it is ginormous and can't fit in your pocket. Um you can get some, like, Jinko uh, <laughs> jean but, shorts or something. But, you know, there's pockets. a lot of things that are helping kind of push me. Dead Cells was one. Yep. Like, oh, okay. Salt and Sanctuary just got a physical release yep. pre-order uh, up live for the Switch. I'm like, okay, we're getting there. We're getting the things that mm-hmm. I would play on Vita that I will buy for Switch. Um, but anyway, yeah, un- unfortunate. It seems like it happens a lot. Mighty Number no. 9 is supposed to come out on, on Vita. Where's that? February 2019. <laughs> Where's that game? <laughs> February 22nd. Next up, Devil May Cry 5 has gotten new trailer, new gameplay, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, most notably, Dante's gameplay got got. got I'm teased. mad that they called that video Dante's reveal. I agree, because I was like, this isn't Dante. Yeah. It's, and then it's, it's, it's literally like, like three six minutes seconds. and 58 seconds of Nero, and then it's like two seconds of <laughs> Dante. That being said, the two three maybe ten realistic seconds of dante really cool dude i'm so excited i'm that, so excited uh, i was already pumped about the i forget the name of the song by now but like the actual like theme song of the game that mm-hmm. they've already revealed and there's youtube videos out for and everything but that's like some blood pump of music it's pretty cool have I'm really you happy seen about the game. thing that the music changes 
Uh-uh. So as you play the game, depending on your combos, mm-hmm. like if you're getting like the stylishes or whatever they're yeah. called, um, the music will be like more rocking and better. And if you start oh, yeah. sucking, the music falls off, basically. Um, so you need, as you're building your combo, the music starts awesome. ramping up. Uh, I'm so excited for this game. Yeah. I, like, uh, I'm all in. I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm all in on this game. The only thing that I was worried about was its release date. Uh, and we got it, and it's coming soon, March eighth. Way sooner than I thought we were gonna get it. Oh yeah. Um, Capcom doing good. They're putting out. They're awesome, getting better. Yeah. yeah, they're putting out awesome re-releases of stuff that people like Okami, things that people mm-hmm. want. They did the Mega Man collection, and then followed it up with Mega Man Eleven, which is nice. they're bringing some of their like dormant franchises back. Yeah. And then they're you know Devil May Cry Five's here, and like, good job, Capcom. Makes me happy. Not, I not bad. I am willing to assume Mega Man X Nine is coming next year. <laughs> uh, that that would be that would be no, my I guess. Just cancel it. Keep the good streak going. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, they're doing all that cool stuff for Street Fighter Five, which I I never have anything positive to say about that game. But uh, they added these crossover skins where I guess you do like challenges or something, and you you get. Uh, special like, yeah. crossover skin for it. They have Airman from Mega Man, which was cool. But they added, uh, I think for the 30th of August, is Fiona from Haunting Ground, which is like one of my favorite PlayStation 2 games, and a character that they've literally never said anything about ever. She might be in a Marvel vs. Capcom uh, assist thing, but like she's hmm. never talked about ever. And it is very weird that they picked her as Cammy's skin, and I'm like, yeah. oh, I'd play. <laughs> if I had that, I would play. Um. Anyway, coming March eighth, way sooner than I thought. Very excited about that. Next up, uh, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Sekiro. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Uh, that's coming March twenty second, which uh, I'm not a fan of that release. Oh, I am. Just keep them all. Like <laughs> the beginning of twenty nineteen is insane. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. Um. It. Yeah. It, it is absolutely insane. We get the best game ever. I think Kingdom Hearts three. And then we 2020. Move, and then we move into some garbage. We get Anthem. We get Days Gone. We get Crackdown Three. I mean, like the even. And then we get Devil May Cry. Even Shadow though Sky I Twice. do not care about Days Gone, just the fact that it's in the middle of all this just makes me feel like I oh, might as well play it. Like I'm just gonna be glued to my controller or PC or whatever. Um, already, it's just like oh, a new game. Oh, a new game. Like just keep them coming. Like, I'm excited. If it was if it was just like in the middle of this year's August, uh, then I'd be like, Days Gone, and see ya. But I don't know, it's like... You're going to be in that gamer mood. Yeah. I think that gamer mood is going to kick in in like three, four weeks here, and it's going to it's gonna be great. Oh, not even that long. <laughs> um, I hope. Anyway, this game looks awesome. They put out a bunch of gameplay. They let people play it. Yeah, they let people come to the oh, studio it and play so it and film it and record it and, you know, and talk, talk about, about it. it. And yeah. yeah, I didn't watch too much of it, uh, so I don't fully understand the system. Basically, they there's like two meters. You have your own meter and the enemies have a meter and you're trying to like dwindle it down. Uh, yeah, it's all... reminded me of For Honor a little bit. It's all about it's called posture. posture. Yeah. yeah. So you're basically the game... It like when you're watching it, it is very souls like. But the main difference is that you have a lot more acrobatics and you have a lot more maneuverability. Which sort of like when I was uh, saying I played Neo for the first time, the fact that it's faster and you know whatever like the key differences between the gameplay makes you feel like oh I'm gonna be invincible now if I could. You know, if I was playing Demon Souls or Dark Souls and I could have sprinted and jumped, like that would have been an right. easy game. Right, but the enemies do it too, yeah. and they will just wreck you. And this game seems a lot more heavily influenced on like actual sword fighting and parries and stuff like that, to where it's not like I'm sure there's some like just basic enemies you can kind of hack and slash, but like you have to be on top of your game and hit you know vital spots and parry and counter at the appropriate moments. For you to, you know, beat the enemy or whittle his health down or something like that. And so this one is going to be difficult in a completely new way. And that excites me. Yeah, I, I'm interested in this game. I'm not excited that it comes after Devil May Cry. Mm-hmm. Um, I might pick it up. We'll have to see. But I am definitely, like I said, interested. Uh, did you see the the death screen? For, for Shadows Die Twice, yeah. Um, yes. 
It's just like a kanji thing, and it says death. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you good. can resurrect, but only, um, you know, you only get that extra life so many times during the game. Uh, there's certain ways to unlock it, but yeah, that's part of the name of the game, too, is Shadows yeah. Die Twice, so you get to resurrect. So that's that's it's, another it's reason but why... The same. It, it is, <clears throat> to me, it looks like the perfect amount of different yeah. for it to be bringing new people, keep the old people. It seems like yeah. it's going to keep everybody happy. But that... That along with the maneuverability makes people initially go, oh man, this game's going to be so much easier compared to, you know, Souls game. Um, but I don't think, I think it's going to be harder. I've heard it's going to be harder. So they said it's going to be harder, but yeah. that's hard to trust. We'll say. Um, like I said, excited. Next up, very small one. Super Mario Party won't support the Pro Controller. So this is just a brand new news story. They've shown off some mini games. They let some yeah. people play it. All the mini games are super gimmicky motion based things, mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that in Mario Party. Yeah. I think that's totally fine. I think that's what you're signing this up for. This is the game where you want the gimmicks, at least that you, aren't Bowser uh, and everyone Jesus. in the same car. <laughs> Man, yeah, th that was the problem with that was there was so much potential there, and they just they were like, uh, flip the lazy switch. Let's just yeah. do this as uninteresting as possible. This one, it seems like they're they're putting a lot more like it's got a heart to it mm -hmm. un unlike mario party 10 or whatever it was called um i'm totally fine with it not using the pro controller i think that everybody using a joy con makes total sense for this game i think the mini games are all gimmicks kind of you know what you were alluding to but that works because they're only these 30 second things that you're doing yeah kind of like wario wear or whatever um man i'm excited it makes for this it game. more difficult too i mean i know it's easier on a pro controller to, you know, m move around with joysticks and stuff like that. But, you know, you want everyone on the same level. Right. Because um, not all of us have five <laughs> pro <laughs> controllers. Unbelievable. Randomly. You do have that one really cool one. Though. Yeah. I um, like that a lot. But, yeah, I, I like everyone having to use the same thing. And I'm sure they'll put a cool spin on it. Um, you know, sort of like we saw in the release video or the reveal i guess is you know when you're, you're putting kinda, the tablets yeah together. when you're kind of docking them next to each other so who knows i'm sure there's a cool reason why but at least as far as oh this guy's got the pro controller he's gonna win this 1v3 or 2v2 or you know one for all thing yeah it reminds me a little bit of like mario kart like the pro controller is just yeah. so much better <laughs> in mario kart it's unbelievable um or it, the uh, wii version when you had the wheel i like <laughs> i do like the wheel um Anyway, yeah, totally fine with this. I, don't, I think that this is fair game. Fair game. Anything short of, hey, we're bringing Bowser mode back, like, I don't think anything can kind of ruin my excitement for the game. Yeah. We're going to have fun when it comes out for sure. Yep. Next up, uh, Shenmue 3 has a release date. It is coming April 27th, 2019. That's what they say. I don't believe it, to be dead honest. Uh, but it's exciting. It's exciting that it is. I remember the announcement of that game mm -hmm. so vividly. It's weird that it's almost here, or yep. at least they're saying it's almost here. Um, I don't have too much to say to it because I have I haven't played my collection yet. Mm -hmm. I don't know how excited I am. I don't know any of that stuff, but I'm excited like culturally. I yeah. know that this yeah. is a big deal, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm excited for it. Kind of like Kingdom Hearts. Sorry. Like I'm excited for the people that have been waiting for this game forever. Yeah. Um, Surprised, uh, most of them are still alive. At this point, <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> but anyway, it's nice that they they're confident enough at least to put a date on Can it. Can you imagine if they also announce and release the Final Fantasy VII remake um, next year? So Kingdom Hearts, Shinmu Three, and <laughs> Final Fantasy VII remake all hit in the same year. I mean, that was similar. Final Fantasy 15 and Last Guardian came out yeah. like right next to it. That was like the weirdest week of my life. I went to the store yeah. and bought those two games together and I was just going home and I'm like, what is that? I mean, <laughs> I'm in some weird like split they parallel do universe. That, and then I guess like PSX at the end of the year, just be like promises kept. <laughs> <laughs> Where is medieval? <laughs> no one cares. That's all I ask for. Canceled. Promises um, kept. <laughs> little tidbit about PSX been announced by now every other year yeah still no announcement of it getting a little worried um, starting to think we're not getting a psx as long as they don't do just some wacky stuff like they did for e3 and they don't have a really big paris games week right before <laughs> well PSX. yeah that was weird that was so bad. i hope they just save everything they got psx 
Yeah, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, is Dream supposed to come out this year? I think it is. <laughs> it's supposed to come out this year, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah it, is it? It was all a dream. <laughs> I, okay. Uh, next up, Saints Row 3 has been announced for the Switch. Um, how do you feel about the Saints Row game? Saints Row is amazing. Wow, I that's not Saints what I expected. Row. Really? Yeah. You like being the president? I, I think I like Saints Row more than Grand Theft Auto, but I won't sit here and say, it's a better game, and then like, go into the Because the reasons. only reason you feel that way is because there's so much purple everywhere in the game. There's just, like... <laughs> Grand Theft Auto is just like a what if you know you did the, what if you robbed uh, this bank or what if you you know pulled this guy out of his car on the freeway what if you ran over this hooker like you know it's kind of <laughs> like some what if and then like Saints Row just like dials it yeah like, it's ridiculous way past I played that. three um, yeah yeah three's the one where you like skydive in the beginning and you're, you're the president and you're, like, <laughs> aliens or something yeah. yeah. Uh, I play that game. <laughs> that game is so much fun. Uh, yeah, please put it on any console or handheld that doesn't have it. Interesting. Not. I, I'm glad you're excited about that. I, I love Saints Row. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, next up, another announcement from Gamescom. The Dark Pictures Anthology by Supermassive is coming. So this is apparently a three-volume anthology of games that are coming out done by the Until Dawn team. Uh, this seems like their main game. Like, they did Until Dawn Rush of Blood, which is kind of a spinoff. They did Hidden Agenda, which was kind of a spinoff. They did Bravo yeah. Team, which was a piece of trash. Um, Hidden Agenda was a piece of trash, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's not forget. Sure, Cool idea. But, but. Uh, uh, that's what I was about to say. But Hidden Agenda at least had like potential. Like it seemed like they didn't cook that game long enough. You know what I mean? Like they that could have been awesome, but they it feels like they Should just have fumbled been it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Whereas like Bravo Team is just like a bad video game. And then they did the Inpatient too, which was that Until Dawn prequel thing that I didn't even get. Uh, I still want to play it, but like I've heard so many bad things about it. I'm, mm. I'm a little bit worried. Anyway, uh, they announced that this is uh, Man of the Meaden is going to be the first chapter or volume in this, and it, it's just going to be, like, standalone horror stories. I believe the story for this is that you sneak on board, like, a World War II ship, and it gets spooky scary. That's kind of, like, the pitch for it. Um, similar to Until Dawn, it's a group of people all doing their thing, and this is going to be coming to everything. It's not a Sony partnership, so it seems like the Sony... Because Sony published a lot of everything that they've been doing so far. It's all been PlayStation exclusive, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of it's been VR, and it seems like that partnership might be over. Um, how do you... F do you have any sort of excitement for this? Did it... Did as long hidden agenda burn you? If, what, you um, as long as one of the characters from this game, unlike Until Dawn, doesn't look like me. <laughs> doesn't act like you either. No, I what, won't what say a, act. What a spot-on portrayal a, of Nick Hassel. That, that's a little bit different. <laughs> Uh, I can't really change my appearance too much more. <laughs> so I, uh, if they make it look like me again, then I'm just like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, Hidden Agenda burned me, but it's not like, it's not the same as like making a bad Mass Effect game and going, oh, Bioware, you sons of bitches. You know, it's not like I've got it out for that company. It's just like, I think they're just like throwing stuff off just to like, stay busy uh, and now they're gonna work on the big thing um that's what i hope it is because i'm worried so i thought supermassive what like they came out they did you know until dawn and i was like oh my gosh sony should buy this studio yeah then they did rush of blood which was the vr um you know clown shooting game and it was a really good vr title yeah and i was like man sony should probably buy this studio and then they just put out garbage yeah. and i was like Oh, maybe like those were just their good ideas <laughs> and mm -hmm. now we're getting the garbage. So like I'm actually unfortunately cautious about this game. Um and like they have one more chance with me. Mm -hmm. Like this is it. So if this comes out and this is even remotely like not not as good as until dawn, I think I'm done with this company, unfortunately, because I really liked their stuff, and I love the idea of doing an anthology where you can tell your own stories. You're not held back by like trying to tie things together, mm -hmm. though I feel like it's going to tie together because everything has to nowadays. But like, I I love the idea of just being like, tell your own little story. Maybe it's like four hours long, or you know, maybe it, maybe it's a shorter experience. That's all fine and dandy as long as it's like a polished working experience. That's not like 
like hidden agenda, which just wasn't like polished. It was weird. Um, I've noticed some stuff like that in Detroit too, where like a character is carrying multiple things and then the next scene they're carrying one and then the next scene they've got the multiple things again. And it's like, cause the scene was made as an insert for mm. whatever choice you made earlier. You know what I mean? And like, it's very obvious that yeah. that scene was built to go multiple ways. Uh, hidden agenda, that entire game felt like that. Like, oh, not even everything. Like that stuff didn't even bother. It was uh, that's for that game. Crazy. It was like just like the game was played better alone, <laughs> even though the game was designed to be yeah, played yeah, with. Yeah. Hey, I, I would have much preferred to play that game just with a controller controlling the character, yeah. all that stuff, uh, for sure. But anyway, that's how this is going to be played. I hope it's it's great. And they they did have the tagline at the end. It's like get scared with your friends or something like that. So they they know that people like playing these games together. We'll see how it goes. I mean, it's either that or Night Trap Two in 2019 <laughs> to be the kind of couch co op uh, hit game of the year. I don't know. I'm I need, I need those once I'm a year. A little worried. Uh, next up. Tyr is coming to Soul Calibur 6 as a DLC character, and people are mad. Uh, mm-hmm. Every DLC character announced before a game is out makes people mad. Stop doing it. Just don't do it. Like, I understand you want to show that your game is going to live on. We know. It's a huge name fighting game. It's also game. day one DLC, so <laughs> we yes, know your game is going to live past day like, one. <laughs> the, people just get so mad at that stuff. And like this one, like I think somebody who did it well was Tekken. Because Aliza is technically DLC, yeah. but if you bought the game day one, she came free. Yeah. And I think that's at least a okay way to do it. Same with um, Blaze Blue, uh, Cross Tag. They gave you the Ruby characters for free, and then they gave you the character pack one for free mm-hmm. if you had it you know, up until that time. So like that was kind of a nice way to be like, look, we've been working on it. Here's the characters for free. Uh, this one's locked behind the season pass, which fe- just feels a little bit dirty. Um, yeah. And it's unfortunate because I actually really, from the video, uh, we were talking about her being in Soul Calibur 3, which I just yeah. don't remember. Um, I also... 3, 4, and 5. Oh, <laughs> really? It makes you feel worse. Yeah, yeah it makes me feel terrible. <laughs> um, I also... Well, I didn't really play 4 and 5 too much. I played a lot of 3. Lucky. Though. Um, I just wasn't into those style characters yeah. back then. Uh, I was like, ooh, Nightmare is a cool, you mm-hmm. know, cool, mysterious, dark your, guy uh, with a giant sword. Grunge phase. Yeah. yeah. Emo phase. Um, so now I'm like, oh, cool. This character is barely wearing any clothes and has a cool weapon. I'm down. Let's play as her. A punk girl with a hula hoop. <laughs> <laughs> plays that character. Uh, but anyway, I, I feel like it's a little bit unfortunate for me because that's who I want to play as. And same with even Aliza um, in Tekken 7. I liked playing as her. And I would sometimes like go over somebody's house or anything, and they they just like didn't have her. I'm like, that sucks. We can't be friends anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See ya. Um, how you feeling about this? How you feeling about the DLC, the announcements? I'm the, so the outrage. I'm so numb to fighting games screwing up DLC that it's just like okay, like you know, it's whatever. It's expected. Yeah, I mean, it's it's along the same lines as like having political opinions at this point. It's just like, okay, here's the other dumb thing that happened this week. Okay, the, the sure. thing is, like, the people that get mad at it, it I think, is a very small amount of people because you look at the most popular games, they're just dumping DLC characters. Yeah, they're just like, like Dragon Ball Fighters just keeps a net. Like, I see mm-hmm. something new every time I'm on the internet for that. Yeah. Blaze Blue literally announced twenty characters yeah. for DLC, and, and we like, thought Tekken was slowing down. And they're just like, ah, eh, here's six. <laughs> yeah. Um, like there, there's a whole bunch of like the most popular games are getting these characters constantly mm-hmm. and they're a big deal. Um, so I don't know. It, I can understand maybe I'm like being locked it. behind season pass, but injustice I, did all that stuff. I don't know. It's a weird, like, I don't know that too many suck. people who are like, you know, almost on the soul caliber fence. Like it feels like people who play soul caliber are like super into it so they're just like i don't care i was gonna get it anyway yeah see the problem is for like me i i would be i think in that camp where Mm. i'm like soul caliber seems cool um the more i see of it the more i like it but like even games that i love like i love cross tag battle i haven't bought character packs for that game because i just wait until the complete edition comes out and then i buy that and i swap out my old one um but it sucks that the character I think I want to play is locked behind a season a season pass. Don't play bad characters. I mean, I mean it might be the best character, and it probably will be if DLC characters uh, 
have told me anything from the past. But I imagine you'll be getting it. Yeah. You getting it on PC, though? I'll probably get it on PS4 and PC. Yeah, if you get the season pass on like PS4 or something, then it wouldn't matter. Most likely. My soul still burns. I so. think I hate you. <laughs> uh, what other news things happened this week? Um, I guess to stay on the trend of fighting games, there was a bunch of Gamescom, a bunch of uh, information, I guess, on them. Um, obviously, Bandai and Amco was there, but they also had more news on Jump Force. Mm-hmm. Um, from last week, I mentioned uh, Gon and Hisoka from Hunter x Hunter uh, being on there. Showed them off in gameplay video. Also showed Vegeta from yes. Dragon Ball. I, think I knew that one. Pre- Pretty much everyone knows who Vegeta is, uh, who's remotely interested in these types of games. Um, interestingly enough, they didn't dive into another series. They threw three more One Piece characters in there. That makes so sense So it to feels me. like they're at about, off the top of my head, like five or six franchises, and now they're adding more meat to each one. Uh, maybe that that's how sense. they're going. I, um, I think it's going to be like four, the four from the main reveal, I think it was. Or it was only three, but I, they added Bleach, yeah. right? I think those four are going to have multiple characters, and then it's going to be like guest characters from yeah. from other things. Have uh, they shown off uh, Ryuk yet? Like gameplay? N- no, I don't think even like people. You know, hey, I'm live at you know whatever. Like they've let people record and show. Yeah, gameplay, I know they, but I still haven't it. seen them in like a playable build. Okay, um, I haven't either. But yeah, this awesome. week's from One Piece was Sanji, Sabo, and Blackbeard. So that's cool because they're. I like how they do good guy bad guy and like they're intermixing it so you get a lot of depth to it and it's not just like here's goku and basically all the good guy clones of him uh so you're getting a lot of cool interesting tidbits in there and it seems like um obviously these are all long-running manga and and or anime um franchises and we're getting versions of them that are a lot more recent or updated um, especially with Bleach characters, uh, some of them uh, from One Piece and stuff like that. Like we're not getting the here's the 1980 version or the 1990 version. We're getting like the 2000 and the mid uh, 2000 teens, I guess, version. So that's pretty cool. Um, interesting or interested, I guess, to see where they go next. I would like if they did like this one was what five or six characters uh, that they showed off. I would like if they did, you know, sort of two or three at a time to go like new fran or yeah, old franchise, old franchise, new guy. Um, just to sort of mix up old and new and just really build it up to have like upwards of like twenty franchises would be cool. But yeah, I Jeez. can understand them not doing here's ten characters from this one, ten like, you know, obviously Dragon Ball real hot right now, uh, as far as Yeah, they're probably popularity. signing contracts for more Dragon Ball yeah. characters as we speak. So, interesting to see how this game uh, continues. Like I said last week, it's nice that even though Soul Calibur's, um, you know, burned some people, I guess, as far as their announcement. Um, Also, while we were, like, setting up to do this, uh, obviously we're doing this a couple days earlier than when we broadcast it, post it, um, as well, was shown off in Soul Calibur 6. A villain, Um, it seems like. Yeah, I guess... One of the two story modes in the game have him as the final boss man, and we were watching it. Um, brand new character from everything that I can tell. I'm I know I've never seen him before. Um, interesting in a off putting sort of way. He's he's very much not like the classic uh medieval style. Yeah, he's, he's he's a sorcerer, he's very magic heavy. It, it kind of reminds me of like Noctis and Tekken. I'm yeah. just like this feels weird. Got a bunch of like energy projectile things yeah. while he's like attacking you. So he seems very much like a boss. Like it makes sense when you're watching him play, but then you're just like, oh, am I gonna sign online night one and have this guy yeah, spam you're, you're gonna get zoned out by the yeah. mage and like, yeah. hopefully he has some sort of like meter or something that you can't spam yeah. i don't know because that's i i'm not like games that have zoning really need to be designed for zoning and that's why like 2d games with zoning kind of mm-hmm. kind of work well but like three games with zoning no, i don't like it all i don't know it's uh it's weird i don't have any inclination to play him I'm just hoping at this point, I hope he's not like insanely <laughs> overpowered, but I... They got to make the trailer look flashy, yeah, though, to be fair. So, uh, and 
same thing with Noctis. It's like when he came out, yeah, he did some broken things in the realm of like Tekken, but he didn't like he's not winning every tournament sort yeah. of thing. So maybe it'll be the same way. He's just also like, he, Tekken's a little weird. People like stick with their characters in Tekken. Yeah. Unlike uh well not unlike other games, but just I feel like people are like, I play this character in Tekken and that is my character and yeah. that's who I play and nobody else is gonna change that. But yeah, interesting to have some uh new for us news drop right as we're setting up so it feels like we're uh right on the cusp of breaking news but yeah. uh, by now it's just you know 30 articles about it and whatever so that was cool but uh, i think that's all the fighting game news that i saw the only other interesting that one that i'll bring up at least is that they showed off a lot of claire gameplay yes. from resident evil 2 I think they showed her in like the beginning stages of a boss fight and a couple cinematics they showed a lot of that boss fight um, it was yeah, but like no progress was really made. It was just I'm pretty like, sure she died. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was just like, hey, guns don't really do much. Uh, hey, this grenade doesn't really do much, and that was it. Like it didn't show like basically like stages of the fight. It was just like, oh, I suck at this game. Oh, I suck at this game. Yeah, it was like the game's um, journalist was handed the controller. They're like you try this, basically, man. Yeah. The same guy who tried to play Cuphead was playing on the controller. For Did, us. I heard um, that uh, some not re- not reviewers, but like game preview people were complaining about the music for Devil May Cry. They're like, man, the music's really bad. And then they came out and they're like, yeah, the music sucks. If you're suck, <laughs> 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 that was pretty good. <laughs> I like it. Um, but yeah, this one was obviously like alpha build. There was no music playing. It was just sort of. I would call it a tech demo at this point, but it was really showing her off because we've just seen Leon, Leon, Leon. So now you get to see yeah, her nice. in sort of a final build. And it was nice to see like her face and you get to see two, um, I'll say returning, uh, but like two characters that were in the original game, a police guy and a little girl uh, that are in the game. And you get to see like how they look now. Uh, it's really cool. It's like a reimagining and I like it. Um, I like it too. I'm excited. Everything I see about this game just. Oh, I forgot. That's a January game too, huh? It is killing me oh not having gosh. this game. <laughs> this is going to be a great, a great 2019. Yeah. Probably the best 2019, I would say. I mean, there's only VC <laughs> to compete. Do you think there's a better 2019 <laughs> out there? There's I don't one. think so. Uh, so that's it for. for yeah, what I uh, added on top of all for, that. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's move into a real quick question here. Uh, with Gamescom coming and going, what do we think the future of these conferences are? So E3, Gamescom, Paris Games Week, PSX, all these things. Uh, it feels like their importance dwindles and rises just year over year. Like, And it's kind of random to me. Yeah. Like, I feel like Gamescom was a bigger deal last year. And then, like, this year, I didn't hear anything. Like, I saw the trailers and the news from it, but I didn't hear people talking about, like, Gamescom like as the event well and I didn't e3 hear... was weird this year whereas like you know two years ago it was the craziest thing in the world and um for gamescom this year i didn't hear any oh man you have to tune in to this link right now like you're gonna miss out and the funny part is that everything that was basically evo was dude you gotta tune in right now to see this because there were some awesome announcements at evo um, and it was really weird because, like I said, Evo was more just like, uh, you know, come watch the cool guys fight or come watch this guy even uh, following for years fight. It's just like a big game tournament. But now it's just like a spectacle. There's lots of stage presence. There's lots of trailers. There's news. Um, and yeah, E3 is weird because they keep flip flopping be- between like uh, press only and like. Okay, yeah, people can come back, out. so they still haven't, like, you can tell, too, that they're still kind of stumbling over themselves, and then uh, the fact that Nintendo does their own thing, and then everyone else is like, we're going to do our own thing, so really, the only people, the only parts of E3 that feel, like, right, I guess, are the people... Are the concerts like, that all the companies put on. <laughs> are the people that have been doing it for, like, a decade now, Um Obviously, Ubisoft <laughs> its own thing too, but I don't know. It's really weird. Like it's it seems at this point, it used to be E three was just like the mecca of all news and you know reveals and stuff like that. And then there's like all these like dozens of other points throughout the year. But now 
Gamescom has risen up. Paris Games Week from last year, maybe it's yeah, gonna that, be a thing maybe now. that's gonna be huge another, like it was last year. Or another maybe huge one is Tokyo Game Show. Sure, yeah. And Tokyo Game Show has steadily been going up and up and up and up as Japanese games have been more popular here. Um, but now it feels like E3 is kind of down low and everything else is kind of right with it. So you don't really have like the Super Bowl of video game news and announcements and reveals and then you have to wait a year. It's just like, you know, you see some awesome stuff here and then you wait a month and then more awesome stuff yeah. and then you wait a month yeah, and yeah. then you wait a month. I agree. Month. It's very spaced out. It, do- it doesn't feel like you're being attacked by That's why PSX... Your attention. Especially since the, the Game Awards still shows a lot of new stuff That's and a lot, of God, insights. a lot of insights. <laughs> um, but now because the Game Awards, PSX doesn't feel like, oh man, I don't have to wait 12 months now. I can wait six months for uh, like more information. Now it's just like... Uh, I already saw this at Paris Games Week, or maybe I can wait a week and see it at Game Awards. Like, yeah, it, it's weird, and I think that they're just trying to figure it out. I do think E three is the correct answer, and that's the answer I want. Like, funnel everything into E three, and then do what Nintendo does, or whatever. Do these directs, the mm-hmm. Rockstar thing. Uh, do these directs when you have something you want to talk about that you feel like you can fill thirty minutes with. I wish every major company did those whenever they had something to talk about yeah. and keep your huge reveal stuff for E3. That would be cool. But I, they, it does feel like they're like, we have 20 announcements to mm-hmm. make this year. All right. Uh, three go to E3. Uh, I guess Paris games. We can have two of them. Oh, Gamescom. We'll, we'll just announce that really casually. Uh, this one's just going to be on the blog. Like it just feels like they're just spreading out themselves so thin and I think it's just going to stay like that. Some years we're going to have yeah. an awesome E3 because those an- those three announcements are awesome. And some years we're going to have a really cool Paris Games Week and- or a cool PSX. And other years we're going to get, you know, three games announced at PSX and I they're really, still not out. <laughs> I really wish they would just do, I guess, numerically it makes sense, like three. I wish they would have Three's like fun. an American... E3, Ooh, a Tokyo, European, Tokyo, and okay, and a Japanese uh, E3, and they'd space out every four months, um, where you know maybe normal E3 stays where it's at four months, but also keep like Game Awards kind of in the middle of that. The yeah, I like Game. I don't have a problem with Game Awards. Game Awards is usually a lot of smaller announcements, yeah. and then like Jeff Keighley drooling over Kojima. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's basically what we all. That's um, basically what it is. But yeah, like I'd really like to see them do that, so you get like. It makes it go back to more of uh, like peaks and valleys, I guess, rather than like it's just kind of like a wave right now. Um, yeah. Like you're just constantly getting bombarded with stuff. And if you're paying attention to the Twitters and the YouTubes and the whatever, then you're just constantly getting updates, um, good or bad, on games. But yeah, I would like it to go back to you know, let's take all of our news, pocket it, wait for the right moment, you know, make this trailer awesome instead of just like a c- CG spectacle. Um, let's get all of our people that are going to be on stage talking about it. Let's just channel it into every four months rather than here's dev diary number 12 about food items in the game, <laughs> you know, or something like that. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like there's too much news, I guess for me. Um, and it, takes what would be like an awesome crazy announcement and it feels like it's been chipped away at and shrunk down and now I get in like three pieces. Um, That's fair. But yeah, like maybe if it did like the fourth month or something like that is obviously going to talk about some of the fall games coming out. And then like if, if they did like an E3 at October or November of this year, think of all the January through April games that they could talk about and show off even more. And then, you know, same thing over and over and over. But, uh, yeah, I'd like it to go back to big events. And Gamescom, Tokyo Game Show, all the other stuff can be, you know, kind of stay where they're at, but re-raise E3 and make it even better. Yeah, I agree. An exciting E3 is amazing, and it does suck that everybody's been backing out of it recently. Um, But it's just better for them. And yeah, not just for us, almost just wish like, hey, if you're not going to abide by the E3 kind of like tradition, then get out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they did. EA left. 
Nintendo. No, I mean like yeah, but you can still tune in to oh, like, and like watch their conference yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Like just get out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you just play it some other like do that another time. Yeah. Why are you doing it on top of everything else if you if you're gonna be crazy? And Bethesda's showing up for some reason. All right. Best what? conference. Man, God. No. Uh let's move into the releases and then get out of here. This is an insane amount of releases. Yeah. I have a whole page. I have no clue about the quality of these. But what an insane amount of releases. So here we go. Uh, first up, August 28th for PlayStation VR, Firewall Zero Hour. So this is the 4v4 Rainbow Six Siege light game. Um, I'm excited to play this. I was happy to learn that it was a $40 launch and not a not a $60 launch. I, I went and pre-ordered it. I'm The more I see about this, the more I'm like, this could be like super addicting. Mm-hmm. Uh, this could be... I mean, they have the whole, like, operator system and all that stuff where all your characters act differently and do different things. But, like, if this game is as fun as I think it has the possibility to be, you know, when I'm watching these videos and stuff of it, um, this could be, like, a time sink in VR, which is nice hmm. because time sinks in VR are rare. Usually it's, like, oh, you know, two to four hours and then you're out of there and you, you don't really touch it again. Uh, it's cool if this is a VR game that like leaves my headset plugged in and I just put it up and then, you know, the next day I'm putting it back on. Like I'm not, I'm not going back into 2d TV mode for a little while. Um, hopefully it's like that. We'll see. I'll definitely report back next week. Uh, little dragons cafe coming to the PlayStation four and the switch. I don't, I know like the art and stuff for this game, but I don't actually know the gameplay. So I don't know. I would eat there, but I don't think we play it. It sounds wonderful. (laughs) Uh, August 28th for the Switch, we have Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. I'm sure a lot of people are very excited about that. Uh, August 28th as well, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, we have Pro Evolution Soccer 2019. August 28th, jeez. PlayStation 4, we have Yakuza Kiwami 2, which is what the remake of Yakuza 2. Yeah, yeah. I, they're just, they've gone through them, they've made a new one, and now they're going, <laughs> now they're going, going back, back through, through them. them again. Yeah, I will say, um, I still haven't brought it on to this podcast, <clears throat> but Yakuza Collector's Editions are steadily becoming probably the best thing. Did you get the, the one that's like glasses? Yes. Oh my gosh. That's why I, I'm sad that right? I haven't brought it, um, because like you get the ice cubes in it, you get like, cool. it was... It basically made you feel like a Yakuza. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> it was really sweet. And the one before it um, came with, I think it was a lighter. No, it was something else. Um, but just some really cool, like, dragon etched into, like, fine metal. Uh, it was, like, really awesome. <laughs> it was just, like... Does the, this one have a cool collector's edition? Uh, I don't know. I haven't looked yet. Huh. I'm interested. I do like the, the uh, like, the scotch glass... Uh, selection me too i've made use of it (laughs) next up august 28th ps4 xbox one pc we have strange brigade we also have ps4 switch pc august 28th blade strangers interesting we also have august 28th ps4 pc ios donut country um or county i guess i would like to visit that place um do you know what this game is because i'm excited for this game this was revealed at I think it was PSX maybe and it's done by the Katamari team and it is makes sense it is just a hole in the ground Mm -hmm. and you control the hole and (laughs) as things fall down the hole gets bigger so you can pick up bigger objects Mm -hmm. and you need to clear the entire map of objects it's just supposed to be like a not mindless but like a zen experience of you zipping this hole Same around, thing as picking then. things up. It's way cheaper than I thought it was. I think I saw it on the store today. You know, it's it's less than $20. I think it's like 12 or something like mm. that. Um, I'll probably pick this game up. I mean, I, I'm... I'm definitely into that kind of stuff. You give me the reses, you give me the Tetris effects, I'm, I'm down. I want some donuts. Sure. <laughs> Why? Did Blob 2 Remastered for the Switch coming August 28th? What everyone has been <laughs> really into. Yeah, everybody's been waiting for that one. Uh, Fire Pro Wrestling World, PS4, PC, August 28th. Heard this isn't bad, I think. I think this is the one that I, I've heard. I've heard people talking I've about. I've heard or good. Um, I might look into it, to be honest. Freedom Planet, Switch, August 30th. Don't know what that is. 
The Messenger, Switch, PC, August 30th. I do know what that is, but I don't know enough about it to uh, speak to it. Uh, Two Point Hospital, PC, August 30th. Okay. Divinity, Original Sin 2, PS4, Xbox One, August 31st. I forgot about this. Um, I did too, to be honest. Easily one of the, I think, the best classical RPG of all time. Um, what I mean by classical is like very not bare bones because that makes it sound like it's a simple game, but because it's actually convoluted and complex and <laughs> meaty. Um, but back to the basics and not you know third person over the shoulder action camera ducking into cover, you know that sort of thing. It's not. Oh, you know what we didn't talk about that was a new story Diablo three, right? Oh yeah, did we talk about that the other week? No, we did. We, we talked did. about that the other week. Never yeah. mind. That feels new, though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this one, like, for sure, pick this up. If you have any sort of an inkling towards RPGs, um, especially more classical type and less like, I don't know, less like Witcher and Breath of the Wild, you know, some of the, I guess, more highly rated games in the past few years. But if you want to kind of go back too. to the basics of these types yeah, of games. Yeah, meaty depth. Of, wow. I don't want to say depth. That's not, that's not the right word. But yeah, it's it's definitely like a traditional yeah. uh, PC uh, RPG. Definitely emphasis on the RP uh, portion of this uh, RPG and not, like I said, ARPG or whatever the games are that we have now. But uh, man, it was getting like 93, 94 on Metacritic or something last year. Yeah, yeah it, uh, was, it was, it was up 90s. there. Uh, it's definitely worth putting in the 100 hours if you can. Um and yeah, if you're not doing Dragon Quest and you're not doing some of these longer Gosh. games coming up and you kind of want to, but you just don't feel like uh, Japanese, maybe not for me, definitely get this one. Right. Worth it. Nick's seal of approval. Ooh, I like that. We should start seal of approval things. Except they're not out, so it's a little hard because it only works for games I don't want your seal of approval. No, why? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? De Blob 2 remastered seal of approval. Uh, and then finally, a uh, a game that is half in another language, but here we go. Uh, Naruto 2 Baruto Shinobi Striker. PS4, Xbox <laughs> One, English. PC. <laughs> what? None of that's English. What? Shinobi is not an English word. Yeah, it is. It's right there. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> it's written with English letters, yes. Uh, coming August 31st. And that's it for the releases. Like I said, huge list. I'll be playing Firewall for sure. I'll probably be hopping into um, Shamu and hopefully finishing up Detroit. And I'm, I'm over-promising, but I also would like to play Mega Man X8 uh, all this next coming week. How about you? What, what's your, your week looking like? Mm, some roguelike Metroidvania action with Dead Cells <laughs> continuing. Because this is one of my last weeks before really just September hits. Um, and it's going to get wild <laughs> after that. Yeah, I don't. I, I didn't look at the, the releases, but I, is early September crazy? What's early September? That's Depends a, on what you want to play. Um, but sure. Like the only thing I can think of personally for September that I'm like, ooh, I need. And I know there's like littler things, but like Shadow of the Tomb Raider is my big one. Mm -hmm. um, Spyro got delayed. Yeah. Um, which, I don't know if we talked about that either. But Spyro got delayed until we November. Did. We did. So, I I don't I can't remember what else is in September. I'm sure there's stuff. But I can't remember what else is in September that I... Dragon Quest. Okay. It's coming up. I mean, that. If, yeah, if you're going to play that game, that's yeah. half the month gone, <laughs> if, if not half. more. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, October is where I feel like the it's... Pedal to the metal, you know. For you, yeah. Right, well, Red Dead and Call of Duty and Assassin's Creed yeah. and all that stuff. That's when just in, I feel like the general gaming population landscape is going to be Um, How long until Tomb Raider? Uh, I think it's like 20 something, September 20 okay. something. I have got a little while. That's why I'm saying I, I want to get like Detroit and stuff just out of the way and, and then hop into Tomb Raider. But uh, uh, Laura Croft, awkward. What do you mean? That is the quote that they, they gave for their update on the game. They said that they're focusing more on her personality, and they described it as awkward. 
I mean, she's basically like a hermit, I guess, except she's always out and about just by herself. So she's like a cave recluse. <laughs> she's basically Obi Wan Kenobi in uh, in A New Hope. I guess. I don't. I know. don't know. Anyway, that's it for this episode of the Press X Podcast. Thank you for being here, Nick. No problem. By Divinity Original Sin Two. And thank you so much for watching. By De Blob Two Remastered. <laughs> we will speak with you next time. One of those twos <laughs> <laughs> was a good choice. <laughs>